Chandini. She is a veterinary surgeon who is practicing in Chennai for past one and a half years. So, in this video, we are going to discuss about some common surgical procedures performed in pets. So, Dr. Chandini, can you explain now what are the common procedures that you do every day in your uh, practice? Yes, so the most common surgical procedures we get include uh, just the spay and neuter that's just sterilizing your pets. And other than that, most often it's dental scaling, which we um, come across when you bring your pets on uh, checkups to us and we find that they have some dental issues or anything like that. And um, otherwise, they're mostly uh, cases where uh, they have some pathology or some disease and we have to do a surgical correction for it because uh, medical treatment or something hasn't worked out quite well. And uh, other than that, I think cesarean sections for puppies and kittens mm. are also quite common. That's very exciting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's really exciting to, to know, deliver puppies. Get, yes, yeah. because we get like, a lot of puppies and they're all so small and cute. Uh, but then it's mostly seasonal, but then it's still a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, most of the other problems come as tumors and um, yeah. infections in the uterus, which is called pyometra and things like that. Yeah. And that's mostly because you don't spay and uh, neuter your pets. Yeah, better spay your pets. And uh, since adoption is like very important, mm. uh, most often <laughs> you should spay and neuter and then if you want another puppy, just adopt another puppy. Yeah. yeah. Even spay and neutering can uh, prevent some ovarian tumors, right? Yeah, most of the tumors that we see as surgical procedures, especially when uh, mammary tumors, mammary tumors. Are, they are very common mm. and uh, pyometra is like super common. Yeah, super so common. all those are like, it's better that you neuter them when they are younger. Yeah. Because they're more healthier, they will stand anesthesia better. Yeah. Versus what you do when they were actually um, a geriatric patient, which is like more than 10 years, and you have to put them through the anesthesia when they're actually sick. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Dr. Shandini, can you tell me which is the uh, right age to neuter your pet? Uh, so, the right age is debatable, but most often we say it's better to be done before a first heat if it's a female. And uh, if it's a male, then again around that month, by 8 9 months. We can get them sterilized. In some homes, people want their uh, to get a litter of puppies or kittens or so from their pet. So in such cases, maybe one litter or two litters if she's healthy enough. Mm -hmm. And if your if the wet is all uh, your regular wet is okay with uh, her having a litter mm -hmm. of puppies or so, then it's fine. So after that, it's better that you get them spayed or neutered accordingly. What are the common questions that owners ask you about animal birth control? Uh, so most commonly uh, pet owners ask us what the procedure actually is. Mm -hmm. So for a female dog or a female cat, it's usually called spaying, mm -hmm. where we actually remove the ovaries and the uterus. Mm -hmm. And um, in some procedures when they're really young, just removing the ovaries also is efficient enough. Yeah, it's called ovariectomy, yeah. right? Yeah. Provided uh, the entire uterus as such is, doesn't have any pathology, there's nothing else wrong with the uterus. In such a case, then it's okay to uh, just remove the ovaries alone. Mm -hmm. In case of the male dog, it's called or a male cat, it's called a neuter, mm -hmm. where both the testicles are actually removed. And uh, in a male animal, it's usually more, uh, it's it's not as invasive as a female where we mm -hmm. have to go into the abdomen to take out the yeah. uterus, the reproductive organ. Mm -hmm. In males, it's uh, on the outside itself. Yes. So the procedure is less cumbersome. A lot of people ask us this question, ask me this question, saying. Uh, so I have a female, I have a male. Is it okay if I just do the female? Shall I leave the male? Yeah, this is very important. Yeah. So this is that's not how it works. One male, in case he mates with three, four other dogs on the street or anything like that, it, he could be mating with a lot of animals. True. So if it's a female, it's only one set of maybe a litter of like eight pups or six pups and all that. So it is equally important to um, sterilize both of them, the male and the female. Yeah. If you're not planning or uh, looking at having uh, further litters of puppies yeah. from them. Mm. From the owner's point of view, what do you think they should be knowing before uh, undergoing this procedure to their pets? Okay, so they should really know that this is a surgery at any cost, there is a risk of anesthesia mm. and it's something major, it's not something minor like a vaccine or anything like that. Mm. So people should be prepared for it Yes. and people should read upon it if uh, they are going to talk to their vet about it, actually just basically talk to their vet about it because they will mm. be able to give them the most information. And every dog that comes in for surgery requires a blood test. Yes, yes. So a blood test just to check whether all the parameters are yes, okay. Yes, so and kidney function. <laughs> Everything, even just yeah. the basic blood count. CBC, blood count. Basic, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so once all that is clear, then the anesthetic risk reduces. So um, that way, one part of your surgery is clear. Yes. And as for the surgical procedure, you can trust your veterinary surgeon to take care of that. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Other than that, what we get questions is, uh, so if there's a male dog and he has a little bit of uh, behavior such as humping or uh, aggression, 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 things uh, like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people ask, oh, so surgery is done with that bow. So that's not how it works. Yeah. So if your dog is already about, let's say, a year and he's showing mm -hmm. aggression and things like that, just because we do surgery on, let's say, day one, it's not like on the next day, as soon as he gets up from his anesthesia, he's going to be less aggressive. Mm -hmm. It takes time. So as the level of the hormone in the blood reduces, he will get better. At the same time, you have to teach him what is right and what is wrong. True. So those are things that I get a lot from people when they ask me, yeah, will he be totally like what I expect the next day? So it's not like that. Yeah. And as for female dogs, yeah, they mostly fight. And because the surgical procedure is a little longer, care, post-op care for them could be longer. Yeah, because the incision is also a bit long. Yeah, it, it's, it depends on the surgeon again. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it, it is a insight that you have to go into the abdominal cavity. Yes. So it does take a longer time and uh, post-op is a little more longer yeah. as compared to a male. Okay. And other than that, um, I think uh, fasting is something that is very common. Very Your common. pets have to be fasted before going for surgery because uh, some of the anesthetics can induce vomiting and when they do, they shouldn't aspirate it. Um, and then when it gets into their lungs, they are gone. Yeah, they could get like pneumonia and stuff like that, which is more serious. Mm -hmm. So if your veterinarian tells you don't feed your dog after 10 p.m., you just should not feed your dog after 10 p.m. No feeling sorry for dog and say, mm -hmm. no, he kept puppy eyes, so I gave him a little water. So mm -hmm. all that doesn't work. That's yes. for the safety of your pet. Yes. So that's a lot of things that uh, I get. They say he was looking very sad, so I gave him a little bit of water. So yeah. that's not okay. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me what is the significance of spaying a female before heat versus spaying her after one or two heat cycles? Okay, so the difference with that is uh, if you spay her before she comes to heat, the chances of her developing tumors that are related by estrogen levels like mammary tumors and things later on in her life is probably 98% lesser yeah. versus with every heat she gets. So if she's already had two heats or something like that, it's probably 78% less chance that she gets uh, a mammal mm. tumor. So the more you postpone it, the more chance of, chance of yeah, your percentage of uh, the risk of her getting tumors and all is more, more common. Yeah. So that's why if you decide if she's going to be like a family member, there's no point in waiting for her to cross her first heat true. or waiting for her to become a year old and then do surgery. True, true. So as, as long as she's healthy, she can go in for her surgery even uh, before her first heat. Yes. Uh, so now we have talked about uh, neutering yeah. in both male mm -hmm. and female. Can you uh, tell us uh, more in, more uh, about uh, different surgeries that you are, that you do apart from routine? Okay, other than this routine, I think it's uh, more dental procedures that yeah. come in, mm -hmm. and that usually includes dental scaling. That's similar mm -hmm. to what we do in hu what humans uh, yes, dentists yes. do. Yeah. Basically, just cleaning the teeth of your dogs yeah. uh, or cats. So uh, this happens only if you take your pets to a, to your vet regularly and he, he or she decides that um, a scaling has to be done. Mm -hmm. Most often six months visits and stuff will tell you how uh, hygienic the mouth is. So if required they can accordingly decide whether a scaling has to be done or whether an extraction is required or anything like that. Yeah. So regular vet visits are completely required. Yes, at least biannual checkups. Yes. <laughs> Now that we have uh, spoken about routine or preventative care, yeah. uh, can you just talk about some uh, uh, like treatment related procedures? Okay, um, treatment related procedures would be like surgery when um, something is wrong with some part of your digestive tract mm -hmm. so, or something like that, anything. Mm -hmm. So what we get a lot is foreign bodies in the stomach yes. and things like that. Most often when puppies pick up one of your toys that are on the ground or eat the socks and things like that. Um, so for those surgeries, those are emergency surgeries yes. most often yes. and that's not on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So as long as puppy care is taken up well, uh, all they should be avoided, like yeah. leaving things down yeah. and all that. Never leave your puppy alone in your home. Yes, that's Never not leave the point unattended. Of, yeah, and that's not the point of having a puppy if you're not there to take care of the puppy. Yeah. If it's an adult dog, it's different. You're feeding once in the morning, feeding once in the mm -hmm. evening. But if it's a puppy, you have to be there to take care of the puppy, True. teach him mm -hmm. or her through the day. And um, other procedures I think are tumors and stuff that come very commonly and the problem I've seen here is so there's a small growth on your dog mm -hmm. um, okay you can maybe wait a week and see how the size is doing yeah. is it growing bigger or is it just the same size yeah. but most people wait because they have gone on vacation they forget yeah. the dog has a tumor or some mass and it already gets so big so big like football or yeah. basketball <laughs> and it's so big 
topic that it's so difficult to remove plus there's so much of stress for the uh, pet patient also yeah so that's really hard so yeah. what you have to do is when you see such growths or anything that looks weird on your pet you would know the best more than your vet because you've been with your pet the entire time yeah. so take them for a check up it's okay if you're just making a visit for a vet for a small lump that doesn't even count but definitely take them up for a check up even if it is a pea sized lump please yeah. consult the veterinarian tumors can grow like anything and as in animals is we some of the tumors we don't even know why they get it because I mean, they're pets, right? Yeah. We don't expect our pets to get too much. They're like vaccine induced to start the yeah. Vaccine. Yeah. So there are a lot of things like that. So you have to take your pet take to it. your vet. Yeah. True. And Shantani, can you talk about GDV also? Yeah. So GDV is one of these acute um, surgical correction where acute surgical correction is required. It's called uh, gastric dilatation mm-hmm. valvulus. Um, so what exactly happens is your stomach turns, as in your pet's stomach turns, and um, it gets twisted. And because of that, whatever content is inside the stomach, let's say you feed him um, rice, and then there's carbohydrate and this gas that's produced mm-hmm. gets uh, trapped in there, and there's a lot of discomfort, and it is like a life-threatening situation. Yes. Uh, I lost my first pet to GDV. Yeah, I and remember. Uh, yeah, he was 14 when uh, he was just weak, and he had eaten his food, and he was walking. So he can usually he just takes three, four steps, and then he's able to. He can't stand much. Yeah. So that day he took three four steps. He had finished his meal. He took three four steps and then he slipped. And when he slipped, his stomach actually uh, twisted. So that's like that's not how it generally happens. Yeah. So things to avoid from your pets um, yeah. for GDV is if he usually is a larger breed dog. Deep chested, no? Like yeah. Can you tell me some names? Name of the. Uh, so most commonly here we see it in Great Danes, Rottweilers. Um, sometimes even uh, Labradors. Labrador. So this happens when they eat a full meal, especially a carbohydrate-rich diet, mm. and uh, then that they too play. fast, right? Most of them eat yeah, fast because uh, they just, you know, Labradors. Mm, they just want to eat. So, um, so after that, after that, they go and they have activities such as playing and things like that. They may rotate, mm. do a rollover, yeah. and when all that happens, the chances of GDV happening is quite uh, common. common. Yeah. Yeah, so it's better you either, when you feed them, either feed them slowly yeah. or you don't entertain this playing that's after food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and if anything like that you find is something wrong with your pet with his stomach looking a little bloated, take him to your vet immediately. And Chantani, do you also perform orthopedic procedures in your clinic? Yeah, so orthopedic procedures mostly the basic stuff, no, like pinning or plating. Uh-huh. Those usually happen only because of fractures and all. Okay. And uh, yes, orthopedic procedures are done, but most commonly, uh, I've seen a lot of rescue people bring in pets and all that and uh, most often it's more of amputations and uh, okay. where you're just little salvaging, trying to save whatever save, is left yeah. basically. I remember you were performing a procedure on a monkey. Oh yes, there was this one uh, um, baby monkey that yeah. got hit by a train because he got electrocuted, he fell down um, and then he was run over. Oh, so he actually had lost his uh, humerus, half of his humerus. Okay. So we performed, I performed the surgery to uh, remove the humerus as such from the joint itself. You, you, you just you had to remove the scapula as well, or uh, no? I left the scapula intact because okay, it's, okay. it's it's like our human anatomy. Okay, so fine, we can fine. just dislocate the shoulder. Fine, fine, fine. So yeah, and then she recovered. And any other procedures you have done like uh, yeah, FHO, all those things? Um, no, I haven't actually done FHOs and things like that, but. Okay. Uh, yeah, nothing too orthopedic, just basic pinning, plating, you know, the FHO and all I'm yet to do, I think. Um, and what about exotic pets like birds, guinea pigs, rabbits and all, do you do any procedure? Uh, so most often, when I've got exotic pets as now, so I had this one uh, parrot that came, an Alexandrian parrot. Uh, uh, so what happened is a lot of people do these feed tubing, tube feeding, tube sorry. feeding. Uh, uh, yeah. So where uh, hobbyists and people who enjoy keeping birds do that on their own, nurse mm-hmm. chicks and things like that. So this one bird had actually swallowed this feeding tube from the thing and came in as an emergency because there was something stuck and he was not able to eat. Oh my god! So we took an X-ray and found out that was the crop intact and all. Like yeah, everything was everything intact. Was it's just that the tube went inside. That's it. Okay, okay. He ate the part of whatever feeding apparatus they were using. Okay. So when we took the X-ray, we did see the foreign body in the uh, uh-huh. the crop. And then after we went for surgery, we just decided to just touch and see how big it is, how discomfort it is before we anesthetized him. Uh-huh. And then as we palpated, we were just able to palpate it out like a string. And uh-huh. we just pulled it out through the mouth. 
Oh, so no surgery, nothing. No, we never had right. surgery. So all these are I mean, so you should know what you're doing before you're doing because the person who had actually uh, taken this chick up was not somebody who's used to feeding chicks and all that. Other than that, uh, rabbits are good. Uh, number of people nowadays have them as pets. Yeah. And most you had Zion, no? Yeah, I also have. Yeah, rabbit. even I yeah. had rabbit. <laughs> Came cool and you had Zion. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, rabbits, people have them as pets, but uh, they don't know that surgery can be done to prevent them from producing a lot of bunnies. Mm. I know they're cute and all, but it's a little difficult when you have nine or ten bunnies and you have to get them yeah. homes and things. So yeah, for them also, uh, birth control is an option. It can be possible. And guinea pigs, hamsters are also there. Guinea pigs also, uh, birth control is an option. Yes. Hamsters also they can be done. Uh, but most people don't bring them don't as such bring them, yeah. Yeah, Because uh, they house them separately, you know, like males with males and females with females. Yeah, but most people who keep them as pets usually keep them together, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And they don't know much the fact that they can even take a guinea pig to a vet, most people don't. They don't, they don't know, yeah. Yeah, so all that is just coming up now, I guess. And uh, other procedures like a broken leg and things like that, yes, for hamsters are fixed. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah so th- those mostly don't require surgery. Okay. So just basic uh, management and stuff we can do with all this. Do you do this uh, teeth trimming because they keep growing, no? Like rodents? Oh, yeah, so I've uh, done that in squirrels actually because okay. most people that keep squirrels here as rescues and stuff feed them rice mm. and they're not meant to be eating rice. They are meant so, to chew on nuts, no? Heavy. Yeah, they're yeah. meant to like use their teeth because that's how it gets uh, cut according to its size. Mm. But a lot of people here want to give, say, my. They feel very happy about saying my squirrel eats only dosa, my squirrel eats easy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my squirrel, squirrel eats whatever, whatever I, eat. I eat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they have to eat almonds or they have to eat nuts. Yes. Uh, they have to like break things. They have to break eat. things. Uh-huh. Yeah, so like that I had two or three squirrels that came in with overgrown incisors, both up and down were like this. Mm-hmm. So I literally couldn't even open the mouth. True. Okay. So for, for that one or two squirrels we have done that. So yeah. this happens commonly in rabbits also. True. True. So I've done for a squirrel and a rabbit before. Yeah. Good. It's more rewarding, right? Yeah, it's nice. They probably have pain immediately, um, but after that, towards the end of the day, they're eating again and they're eating better. Good, good. Versus good. how they're eating before. Okay. So tell me, like, uh, which one do you enjoy the most? Like, is it more uh, puppies, uh, routines, or you uh, enjoy this exotic, unexpected emergencies? I think because I'm a surgeon, most often it's unexpected because it's most cases like out of 10 cases one would be totally unexpected or even if you think it's something else when you actually go in like every spay i do or every neuter i do also i find a lot of difference inside okay and with the more number i've been doing i see a lot of difference it's 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 really different it's never like i've got enough of it yeah true. because there's so much of new things to learn even though it's the same procedure same way and it's every every size is different. Yeah, yeah. And every species also makes a difference. Yeah, so I think everything is like rewarding. Oh, so, yeah. Have you ever uh, had experience with um, exotic like sorry reptiles, snake, crocodile or something? Yeah, like I that? have operated on one snake before. He had a cloacal prolapse. Okay. That's like the rectum, the, yeah. the rect- equivalent to a rectum. Just like how we have on. rectum prolapse. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that snake had a cloacal prolapse. So okay. he was a python. And male? he was a male. Male, okay. Yeah. It's and uncommon in males, right? No, there it was uh, mostly because of improper feeding and deworming, etc. Okay, okay, like so he had chronic dysentery for some time, okay. and that led to a prolapse. Fine. So fine. he was treated surgically, and after that, he, we had to do a colopexy. Twice we did surgery. Okay. And after the colopexy, he was better. We have reached the end of this video. So thank you so much for spending your uh, time with us. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, um, hope to do more. Yeah, we should do more. I you guys got any questions, I think you can put it below in our comment in box. In the comments, yeah. Yeah, and Varsha will probably yeah, respond I'll try to them. answer. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>